Hello, 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 and welcome. Get your Bibles, get yourselves, get your people, and let's get ready to go to the Word. I am Dr. Carolyn Boston Love, Bishop C from Jacksonville, Florida. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the midweek, to the midweek. Things happen when we call on his name. His name is Jesus. But things also happen when we meet for midweek. Good evening, good morning, good midday, wherever you are. Thank God for technology. We can meet at any space and place. But wherever you are, greetings from Archbishop Leonard Love. Bishop to you, to them, to everybody. Family, friends, supporters. If you're just scrolling through and happen to stop by, you are welcome to this space and to this place. I want you now to press the share button. Go ahead, press the share button so that your contacts, your family, your friends, your people can join our people and together we go to the word. Oh, we're about to begin a three-part series. Oh, yes. It's time that we make sure we are in divine alignment with where our God is. So you did not stumble up here. It is by divine assignment. You're in the right place at the right time with the right group of people. So get your mind ready. Get your Bible ready. Make sure you can take your notes. And guess what? I am the kind of teacher that I need you to respond back to me. Put it in the comments. Put it in the chat. When I preach, you preach. When I speak, you speak. And we go together to make sure we are impactful in this day and time. So, as we look at mm, this important subject area, I want to talk to you about making sure you are positioned and aligned so that whatever God has next for you, you will not miss him. Life is too short. And you've been through too much to get to this point. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Say this point, this point, this point. Get to this point and miss God. Now, absolutely not. Not at this point. Not at this point. So as we adventure into the word, I want to talk to you about recalibrating. What? Yes, recalibrating. I need you. I need you to put that in the comments. We are intentionally and deliberately teaching on this because it is time for us to shift and make sure that nothing that's going on or has happened has caused us to be off course with God. So to help us drive this point home, I have, you know, some people don't like for you to touch their stuff. Archbishop wasn't really happy about me using this as my focal and my reference point. But because it's expanding the word, I am here. I am utilizing his sporting scope. His sporting scope. Archbishop is a hunter. He enjoys the sport of hunting. And in order to make sure that he is accurate in his distance and in his aim and in his focus as he's hunting and he hunts different things at different seasons. And so he has to use his sporting scope to make sure that he is on target and that he doesn't miss anything. Now, this is just the box and the package that he uses, uh, that he stores it in. And it's under lock and key. And believe me, the children and the grandchildren, we don't have access to this. So I'm privileged to use this in my illustration. The scope is what he adds to his rifle or his firing arm to make sure that he's on point. He's on. Come on, somebody put scope in the comments. He wants to make sure that his aim is accurate. 
He wants to make sure that, that he checks where he's aiming to, to make sure that his target is hit precisely. So this attaches to his firing arm to ensure accuracy. I need you to put the comment accuracy. Yes, this scope, this scope. And anytime this scope is not accurate, then it has to be reset. Come on, let me talk to you tonight, this morning, this afternoon, whatever time it is. It's about the reset, reset, reset. Put that in the comments for me. This scope is about making sure your targeted aim is right where it's supposed to be. And, and, and if it's not, then you recalibrate. Come on. You recalibrate to make sure you rectify the aim. Make sure that you are on target. Make sure you see what you think you see and you're aiming at what you're aiming and you hit the target. When you recalibrate, you're just making sure you're not just here, there, and everywhere. So I wore my top that's got my circles. It's all here, there, and everywhere. All here, there, and everywhere. Life is so fickle and so unsure on sometimes. Sometimes you feel a little here and a little there. But I brought the scope in. I brought the scope in to help us recalibrate and get on target where we supposed to be. When you when you calibrate something, calibrate something. I'm coming to my scripture. Hold on, sweet witch. Slow down. When you calibrate, that means you make changes, large or small, to determine or to check to even rectify your measuring instrument. What are you measuring your faith on? What are you measuring your focus on? What are you measuring your productivity on? What are you measuring your praise on? Come on, somebody put in the comment, measure, measure. What, what are you measuring by? Any instrument that you use to measure, you have to make sure that it is accurate. Mm -hmm. And so in, in, in Archbishop's hunting, he makes sure that his scope is in alignment and that, that it is adjusted so that his aim is on point. He doesn't need to be here, there, and everywhere, but his aim needs to be on point. Somebody put in the comments, on point, on point, on point. So there are instruments, ah, God, I bless you, that are designed to help us be on point. Why do we need to be on point, Bishop? Why is this so important? Because you have come too far to miss God where you are. Come on, somebody put in the comments, too far. I'm, I've come too far. How in the world am I going to get here and now I miss God? I've come too far to miss God. So, so we've got to live life aimed and intentional aimed, come on, put aimed in the comments, aimed. I, I don't mean just here, there, and everywhere, but aimed and intentional because what's ahead of you, what's for you, what's yours in this year of open doors, it is in a targeted place. It's not all over everywhere, here, there, and everywhere. No, 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 no. It's in an intentional place. So as we go to the word, we're going to Deuteronomy, Old Testament, the 11th chapter. A couple of verses of scripture that I just want to help us begin to aim our scope and make sure we're on target. Have you pressed that share button? Have you pressed that share button? Press that share button because you don't want anybody to miss this. Deuteronomy chapter 11, beginning at verse 8. And here Moses writes and he gives instructions. And he says, what is expected of the Israelites as they prepare to enter into the promised land? I'm just here as a voice from heaven to help you understand what you are expecting. You've got to be on target to reach it, to get to it, to possess it, for it to manifest. It's not just going to fall out the sky. It's not just going to happen just because so. Wake up. You've got to recalibrate. You've got to be 
targeted. You've got to be intentional. So Moses writes, he says, soon, verse eight, soon you will cross the Jordan River. And if you obey the laws and the teachings I'm giving you today, you will be strong enough to conquer the land. Verse nine, and the Lord promised your ancestors and their descendants. It's rich with milk and honey, and you will live there and enjoy it for a long time. Verse 10, it's better land than you have had in Egypt. Where I'm taking you is better. Where you have had struggles just to water your crops. I'm about to show you what I promised you is coming to pass. Verse 11, verse 11. But the hills and the valleys in the promised land are watered by rain from heaven. So you've been struggling in this other land trying to get to the promised land. And because of water and, 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 and that, the things necessary for your crops and your livestock to produce, it was not readily available. So you had to toil and you had to work and you had to struggle to get the water to, to, to your animals, to your land, to, 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 your, to your place of promise. But he says, but if you follow these present day instructions, I'm going to take you from the struggle and I, I, that you had to water your crops with. Verse 11, he says, but I'm taking you to a place, the hills and the valleys, which it looks like it is not a place of provision. It's in the promised land. And in that spot, come on, you better be on point. You better be aimed. You better be targeted. In the promised land are watered by rain from heaven. I'm going to send water. Mm -mm -mm. I'm going to send everything that you need. I'm going to send exactly what I promised you. And I promised to your ancestors that I would provide for you. I am going to meet the need. But I just need you to be in the right place at the right time with the right group of people and be doing the right thing. Verse 12, he says, because the Lord your God keeps his eyes on this land and takes care of it all year long. God help us to recalibrate, help us to be on target, help us to be Aimed, help us to be positioned, help us to be targeted so that where you are sending your current day provision, that we're not somewhere else when you're sending it in this particular location. So in Deuteronomy 11 verse 8, he says, soon, come on, somebody put in the comments, soon, 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 soon. You are closer than you've ever been, but you can't be off point. You can't be off target. You can't be in somebody else's land when your land is designated for you. He said, soon you will cross the Jordan River. And if, if, come on, somebody put in the comments, if, if, it's conditional. It's conditional. That's why your calibration has to be precise. And if it's off, then you got to recalibrate so you're on point. And if you obey the laws and the teachings that I'm giving you, when? Today. You will be strong enough to conquer the land. And the Lord promised not just to you, but to your forefathers and to your ancestors and their descendants. He said, this land, where I'm taking you, come on, come on, somebody put in the comments, this land, this land, this place, this space, this cycle, this season, my God, it's rich with milk and honey. And I will, and you will, I'm sorry, and you will live there and enjoy it for a long time. Who want to miss a place that's been set aside to help you 
Enjoy life and live a long time. Come on. It is time for you to live. Come on, put in the comments. Live, 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 and enjoy. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank you for thinking enough about us to interrupt our normal, mm, mm, mm. to help us be precise in where we are so that we don't miss what you have set up for us. We will live there and enjoy it for a long time. Verse 10, it's better than you had in your previous spot. If you think life has been good, if you think you have done this and that, if you think that you have arrived, let me tell you this. Where I'm taking you is better than that. Come on, somebody put in the comments. Better than, better than. You deserve a place, a spot, a land, a season, a cycle where it's been better than what you've had before. Where you had struggle just to water your crop. The agricultural part of you surviving has been a struggle. If it wasn't this, it was, it's was. it been one thing after another. Verse 11 says, but the hills and the valleys, no matter how high you go, no matter how low you go, in the promised land. That's the part I need you to get. It's in the promised land. It is not in your land, in your space. It's not even in your comfort zone. Come on, somebody put comfort zone, not in your comfort zone, not in your norm, not in your regular, not where you have always been. If you're expecting to get something and have something new and you want to do the same thing you've always done, you know what that is. Who expects something different without doing and becoming somebody different? He says, in the land which I promised you, that's a promised land. And in that place, you will be watered. You'll be nourished. You'll be supplied for with rain from heaven. Let it rain. Come on, somebody say, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain. And for those of us, who know what it is out there in the world. When you let it rain. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Back to the lesson. You know what I'm talking about. Rain from heaven. Verse 12. Because the Lord your God. Keeps his eyes. Keeps his eyes. He doesn't miss anything. He keeps his eyes on this land. Not your land. Not where somebody sent you. Not where somebody else promised you something. Not where somebody else said, I suggest that you do this. I recommend. What did the Lord say for you to do? Where are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to have your hands on? What are you supposed to be accomplishing in this season? It needs to be in the place where the Lord, your God, keeps his eyes. Come on, somebody. Put the word keep. He keeps he keeps his eyes on this land. That's why you got to be on target. That's why you got to be precise. And takes care of it all year long. God, I bless you. I bless you that you are taking us as a people into the possessing of a fertile land. But Lord, we can't get there being where we want to be. We can't be there. We can't live there. We, we can't produce. We can't experience when we want to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, and how we want to do it. There comes a time and a season when your scope has to be recalibrated. If I'm missing the mark, help me to get on target. Help me to aim for the right thing. Help me to be in the right place at the right time with the right group of people. Do what you need to do, God, in me and for me so that I don't miss you 
in this season. I need you to take care of me in this season all year long. I need to be in my land that's flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey implies many good things. Come on, put that in the comments. Milk and honey implies many good things. What is it that you're missing? Where is it that you've been striving to get to? The scripture tells us in verse 10 that Egypt is no comparison to what God and where God has for you. That promised land is where you want to be. If you're going to put effort and energy into being and doing and going somewhere, put it in the right place. Don't be all over everywhere. A circle is a circle. No, it is not. If it is not the detailed place where you are supposed to be. In all of the circles that I have on, if you aim your scope, you will find that there are two solid black buttons. In the midst of all of the confusion, in the midst of all that's going on, in the midst of all the ups and the, all the downs, there are two detailed places that are designed to bring this and hook this whole situation together. But unless I aimed and targeted at being at the right place to connect, yes, there are a lot of circles, but it's only two of the right circles in this whole pattern or scheme of things. And I just need you. I just need you. I just need you to be on point. Come on, somebody put that in the comments. Be on point. Be on point. Be on point. In America, with all the crisis that we have going on, you need to be on point because you need the blessings targeted to the health care system. Come on, come on, come on. Let's let's bring it home. When you're not all churchy and religious and traditional and, and you got to real, live real life, you need our government. You need our judiciary system. You need justice on point and on target. You need your economical status on point. And come on, somebody put in the comment on point and on target. We need the church. We need the ministry on point and on target. Leadership, I call you. Men and women, boys and girls, I call you to be on point and on target. We need to be safe on point and on target. We need to be protected on point and on target. We need every, 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 every school. Every institution, every place where people gather to be protected. We need to be where God has us covered. Come on, somebody put in the comments, covered, 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 covered. You do not need to be all over everywhere. And if you are tonight all over everywhere, then we ask God to settle you. Settle you, bring you into a space and a place where you are where you are supposed to be, where we are. Let me see how I want to say this, where we where our steps are ordered and ordained of the Lord. I need you to put in the comments ordered steps. And when they're not ordered steps, they are also ordered stops. Scripture says the steps of a good man, of a righteous man, they are ordered by the Lord. And all of your steps does not mean that you are making movement. Some of those steps are stops. Somebody put stops in the comment. God, even when you bring a stop, if it's ordered by you, let us not fight 
the stop. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Help us to be directed by you. Help us to be moved by you. Help us to be grounded in you. Help us to be a people of results because we trust you. Help us, oh God, as you give us revelation for these transitional times that we're living in, that we're not holding on to what was. There are some things that what was that will no longer be anymore. Help us, oh God, to come to a place where we settle within ourselves. That I want this season of transition. I want this new season. I want this land of milk and honey. I want, I want my turn for manifestation. I want, I desire, and I need you to put in the comments, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve, you deserve. No matter what life thinks, I deserve it. And so, Father, I thank you. I thank you for allowing us to birth a new thing by being recalibrated. We've been here and sometimes we've been here, but in the way. Help us to get out of your way. Help us to move just like you would have us to move in this day and time. I thank you, Lord, for we're in a deeper place with you where we desire more. I want you, God. I got to have you, God. I, I want to be sharp. I want to be on point. I want to be precise with you. Father, help this wandering here, there, and everywhere. Help it to not ruin my future. Oh my God, I bless you and I thank you. I thank you, I thank you that there is a promise that you have given for the things that seem to be impossible. I thank you, Lord God, we repent now of the times that we've insisted on doing our own thing, doing it our way. Listening to this one, listening to that one. God, what would you? He said, you hear me what I say today. There you'll find the instructions to enter into the promised land. Scripture says in Acts chapter 8, verse 22. Acts chapter 8, verse 22 from the Amplified Bible. Doesn't matter how long you've been off track. Tonight, today, this morning, this moment is your moment of calibration or recalibration. Acts 8 and 22 from the Amplified says, So repent of this depravity and the wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this contriving thoughts and my ways and how I've done things and my purpose of my heart may it be removed and disregard it and forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us of working diligently and consistently on our thing rather than where and what you would have us to do. So, so, so if, if sin hinders us, we can hinder ourselves too. We must get out of the way. I need you to put in the comments, move. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Move. You got to move. You, 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 you're in his way. You're in his way trying to do your thing to get his results. Oh my God. Oh my God. Second Corinthians 10 and 5. Second Corinthians 10 and 5 in the Amplified says, In as much as we refute arguments and theories and reasonings and every proud and lofty thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we lead every thought and purpose away captive into the obedience of Christ, Christ the anointed one. If it's me coming up against the high things that you have set for me, move me, God. Move me out of the way. Help me to see that it's not the enemy, but it is the enemy and the forces of darkness that I've allowed me to operate in me. God, if it's me, whatever I have done, I need to be in your form of, of, of obedience 
and every high thing that chooses to exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Help me. I thank you right now, Lord, for adjustments, attitude adjustments, attitude adjustments. Come on, come on, put it in the comments. Attitude adjustments, attitude adjustments, attitude adjustments. God, I can't think I'm right. I can't think that it's my way or no way. I thank you for what you're doing in us now. Romans 12 and 2, Romans 12 and 2. In the Amplified Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. Your world or this world. You got to be battle ready. He says, this world or this age, this present age, fashion after and adapt to its external superficial customs. Life can be so demanding. So much pressure that if it's not the world's way, then it's no way at all. The devil is a liar. He says, but be ye transformed, be ye changed by the entire renewal of your mind. Be ye recalibrated. Be ye reset. Be ye repositioned by the renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God, even the things which is good and acceptable and perfect in the sight, even if it's not in your sight, let it be in God's sight. Let it be in God's way. Let it be in God's will. Let it be God. Come on, come on, somebody put in the comments. Let it be God. Let it be God. Let this be the hour of making some sensible decisions. Continue this route and miss God. Or change and go in God's direction. Recalibrate us. Help us to be on point. Whatever has gone wrong on the inside of us, help us with that. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Anywhere on the inside of us that we've allowed it to become disguised by the ways of the world, rotten, entangled, contaminated. Father, I thank you that in this moment of prayer, we yield to you our memories, our thoughts, Every deep wound, oh God, heal us so that we can be on target. Every broken moment that we've encountered, heal us. Everything, every person, place, or thing that we've allowed to attach to us, recalibrate us now. Father, we will not live in revenge and regret and self-imposed limitations. Help us, God. Oh, God, as we pray tonight, if one is stuck or one is in a cycle of being stagnant, bring us out tonight in Jesus' name. For the point that we were betrayed and we've never been able to move on, heal now in the name of Jesus. We speak to defeat and discouragement, depression and oppression. Go now! In the name of Jesus, negativity, you cannot stay here. We're being ordered. Our scope is being, being tweaked and we're putting places in our lives, in our heart, in our inner man and in our head and in every part of us. God, our spirit so that we're on point with you. Us put our scope in alignment tonight in the name of Jesus. And we will be a people that will forever. Thank you and praise you. I thank you that we've not missed you tonight. Ah, I thank you that we tuned in for the instructions so that we can move forward into the promised land. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Who calibrate or recalibrate? 
It's time to make a move. Come on, put in the comments, make a move. Make, make the move. Yes, 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 yes. Bless you. Thank you for being here tonight. A part of our worship experience is accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. As simple as receiving the word, you got to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. Just simply say, Father, I'm sorry. I missed you. I, 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 I miss life, but I'm ready to become a part of your kingdom. Speak with him. Talk to him. Have conversation. Repent of your sins. Acknowledge Jesus as Lord. And you will become one that accepts and you're welcome into the kingdom of God. We celebrate you. If this is your first time saying that, making that prayer, making that declaration, and accepting Jesus as Lord, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Well, family, it's time to give as a part of our worship experience. Thank you for being here with us, but don't leave until you make sure this final portion of worship is taken care of right now. The platforms for safe giving, they're right there on the screen. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait till later on. You have your phone. You have, you have your instruments right there near you. Go ahead. Bring your tithe. Return it. Your seed. This is an excellent place. An excellent place for you to sow your seed now. Your offering. Your gifts of support to the ministry. Whatever you are supposed to do, don't put it off. Because that's when it doesn't get done. But be on target. Calibrate or recalibrate. But be on point with your finances. This is a safe place to give. It has been my pleasure to teach. I look forward to the upcoming parts and the series. And make sure you replay. Share and replay. Share and replay. And let's grow forward together. Recalibration is on God's heart. For his people. Because there's a promised land. Filled with milk and honey. And I don't want you to miss it. God bless you.